Hi, I'm Amy and today we're going to talk about my second most important tip for good genealogy research and that is timelines. Why timelines? What's the deal? That seems like so not the thing that you would be talking about. And there may be people that have some other thoughts on this topic and may come up with a different number too. But the reason I love timelines is it helps me be a better genealogist. It helps me avoid mistakes, mistakes that I see all the time in other people's trees. So if you want to avoid mistakes and you want to do a good job in your genealogy research and create trees that are as correct as we can make them, you want to know how to use timelines and you want to have the opportunity to use them in a way that works for you. So today I'm gonna to give you the why you wanna use timelines, I'm gonna get into some of the specifics, and I'm also going to show you a bunch of different timelines because something's gotta work for you. So how can timelines help you not make mistakes? Let me tell you, timelines will save you a lot of time, haha. Uh -huh. By seeing things visually, you're going to recognize things that just don't fit. I'm gonna give you an example in a minute. Before I go there, I bet you're wondering, what's my most important genealogy tip? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> That's the video for next week. So hold on for that one, a no spoiler alert here. Anyway, back to timelines. They really are the key to good genealogy research. When you take the time to do a timeline, ah, you really will be a better genealogist. So what am I talking about? What do timelines show you? Timelines help you identify conflicts. And that is actually the main reason why I see a lot of people make mistakes and not use them. I can't tell you how many beginning and intermediate genealogists that I've spoken with over the years that don't use timelines. And it's really something that you need to know how to do. So timelines also help you identify research possibilities. They'll tell you, where do I need to go next? What are some of the things that maybe I overlooked that I didn't look into that I should have? Or what are my next steps? I use timelines all the time in census records. I use them to organize census records. I use them to verify that this is the same family by putting them into a chart or a timeline. I can see how they're moving through time in census records. And when you're looking at census records pre-1850, gosh, even more important. Um, timelines also help me see family movement. Um, so not only as I, am I looking at where somebody was in a point of time, like in a census record or any other record, it helps me recognize when a family is moving. And in some instances, it helps me realize that maybe this isn't the same family. If you have somebody that's here and then way over here and then back here and then, and then back here, and it's not making sense, yeah, maybe it could have happened, but that's a warning flag to you that, wait a minute, maybe there's two Joe Smiths, which promise there are, and so I need to be looking and making sure that I haven't adopted somebody that really is a completely and totally different person. They can also help you break through brick walls. Timelines can be huge in helping you organize your information and see things in a way that maybe you had missed before. They can help you put things in proper perspective and they can help you identify people that you need to be looking at more carefully. The other thing that I really like about timelines is they help me see the big picture. I'm a visual person and so when I look at a timeline, I don't know, it just kind of comes together for me and it helps me see the gaps that I have in my research. So those are some of the reasons I like timelines. I bet you have some great reasons why you like timelines as well and put them in the comments. I love to hear what timelines have worked for you and how they've helped you overcome obstacles and like this video if it's of help. So let's get you into more details so that you will want to like it. So this is my Timeline Master document, and I'm actually gonna put it up there if you want to get it. I have a couple of levels of membership. One's just a support level, but the other one, Amy's Crew, gives you a um, opportunity to download anything that I throw up there for people to purchase. And so if you wanna be a member of my YouTube channel as Amy's Crew, you can get this for free, or you can go over to my Etsy page and you can purchase it for five bucks. I don't wanna make it really expensive. I want it to be something that you use. This is an Excel spreadsheet. FYI, it doesn't translate well to Google. What's it called? Google, I can't think of it. I'm drawing a blank on it. Anyway, the Excel version of Google. Doesn't translate well to that. 
So, um, but I added some things to the spreadsheet to make it more user friendly for other people. And so if you'll see here at the bottom, we have all these different tabs and I have different timelines kind of um, assorted by, you know, where you might use them and what they might feature. Now this Excel spreadsheet does have some formulas in it and some great information in here. So that's why there's an advantage to having the actual, actual spreadsheet. And I'll identify that in a minute. Some of the images are photographs of spreadsheets that I created in Word because Word is a better environment for that type of spreadsheet. And I'm gonna tell you which is which, all right? So let's dive in. The first thing that I wanna go over are timelines that are created by your genealogy programs. Whether you're using something online like Ancestry or whether you're using a program on your computer, it, they all, most of them kind of seem to do this in one form or another. And I really like how Ancestry does it, so I'm gonna use that as an example. You'll see here on Isaac Milloway, you'll see his birth in about 1799 in Virginia. And then you'll see his birth of a daughter, Mary Ann Milloway, who I am related to him through. And then you see that he married Judith and then he was enumerated in 1830 and he had other children. He had two sons after 1830. And so the first thing, and this is something that I see all the time, the first thing is by throwing it into this timeline for me and showing me the birth of the other family members, I'm like recognizing right away that Marianne is not the daughter of Judith. So this is a great way to identify immediate issues with births of children and who do they really belong to. The other thing by just a simple timeline like you're gonna see on any of these genealogy programs is you're going to see residences. And you wanna be looking at those and seeing if those kind of fill in there. So this is a great way to begin your genealogy research and in the use of timelines. Pay attention to the timeline that is provided to you in whatever genealogy program that you're using. All right, let's get into more difficult ones. So this is just a basic spreadsheet that I've created. I have different columns and I even have the month and date in case that's important. If it's not really important, I can take out those columns to simplify the spreadsheet because what's going to make these timelines the most effective is to kind of keep things simple. The more complicated you get, sometimes the more difficult it is to really gather the information that you need out of the timeline. So in this instance, I do have the month and date, but I could easily take that out. Um, I have the age in there, but I could easily take that out. Sometimes that just helps me see things more clearly. And then I have the name of the person that I'm trying to include in the timeline. And that is important for me if I'm looking at an entire family, but sometimes I'll do a timeline just for an individual. So that column may not be needed. Um, and then I have the event and then I have the location. And by putting things in that order, it helps me more better understand what happened with this individual. It helps me think about, well, what happened between 1841 and 1850? Um, what other records do I have after 1850? Things like that are things that this will point out for me. This is a basic timeline. When I click on one of the arrows by the different column titles, the name, event, or whatever, I can sort by that particular thing. So I can sort by location. If I have multiple names in the timeline, I can sort by the name. Of course, I probably wanna be sorting by the year, things like that. So those are things to keep in mind. Now this is very similar in that the timeline details are kind of similar, but this is actually created through formulas. And so if you get this spreadsheet on my, you know, from me either by being a member or on the Etsy page, um, you need to make sure you make a copy of this document before you start messing around with it because you might do something that ruins the formulas and then you won't have it, it will be gone and that will frustrate you. So I really like this timeline because it's a great timeline if I want to put it in some kind of printed material. If I want to put it in a book or if I want to put it in some kind of a report, it looks really pretty um, and it's very clear. So on this timeline, first you put the details into the spreadsheet and then it plots this timeline for you. I don't think these timelines are quite as helpful for research purposes, but they are really helpful to illustrate things to other people and that can be kind of a good thing. So that's a good timeline to have. My next examples are some census timelines that I've used. Um, I use timelines all the time when I'm doing census research. It's really the only way I can kind of keep my head on straight. So when I'm doing these timelines, I'm going to be looking at various things. Like this first timeline is 1850 to 1880, and I'm just kind of plotting a family through time. Now I've put some information in the top column for the head of household that talks about like whether he owned property and things like that. That, that helps me track 
maybe where I might find land records and things like that. But I'm primarily looking at his age and making sure that it kind of jives with what it should. And in this case, it does. And we see that in 1880, he's a widower. So his wife had passed away, which she's not in the census record. And so then we see the different children and we see them coming of age and moving out of the household. But we notice that by these ages and we see this consistency in the children, I know that this is the same family, even though they moved from Stanley County, North Carolina to Johnson and Green County, Arkansas, and then to Eastland County, Texas. This helps me identify that this is the same family. So this timeline is really helpful for me. Another example of a census timeline is when I'm looking at records that are pre-1850. That holds up a lot of people, right? Because in the 1850 and later censuses, we have every member of the household listed in the family, which is great because then we have all those names. However, prior to that, all we have is the head of household listed as well as the ages of various members of the household. So you kind of have to do the work. So this is a timeline where I have the different people outlined in the census and you can see that I have a male age blah blah blah. In the 1850 I actually had the names because he was found in the 1850 census. But prior to that I'm just listing them by their age ranges. And that should jive, that should work. Now you'll see that his wife Rachel, she was in 1830 between 40 and 49 and then in 1840 between 40 and 49. And that might like throw up your alarms, which yeah you need to be cognizant of that. But my guess is, particularly by the 1820 census, that she was just barely 40 in 1830 and then she was 49 or 50 in 1840. And it kind of depends on when the census was taken as well. So this is a great way for me to outline a family, identify children that I've missed, that may have passed away that I need to be looking for death records of or cemetery burial plots or things like that. And then I can go through and in this table, as you can see, I went back through it and I inserted the name of the children as I identified them. This to me is a super helpful timeline. I probably make these tables more than I do anything else. Now this is a similar timeline in that it's all pre-1850, but in this instance, I'm looking at various individuals with the surname of Grant. And I'm trying to see who lived in a particular area and I'm trying to track them and see if they moved around. So here you can see the different county that they lived in and the family members. So it helps me identify whether or not I'm really tracking the right family and whether there was another Joshua Grant that lived in the area or something like that. So this is very helpful for me as well. All right, timelines with sources. Now to me, this is kind of the, which am I using my timeline for, right? If I just need to come up with a quick and dirty and it's like for my own personal use, I may not attach the source to the timeline because that takes quite a bit of time. I'm gonna have the source in my research calendar, but I'm not necessarily gonna spend the time and put it into my timeline. However, if I have a document for a client, and I want to make things very clear that it's a great way to insert sources into my timelines. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. If you do it in Excel, you can't add footnotes or endnotes in Excel. It just doesn't work. You can add a note and that looks like this. But to me, it's kind of more difficult. And a lot of times, if I'm gonna do this type of a timeline, it's gonna be in another document anyway, a Word document. And so I tend to create these timelines in the Word document. And this is an example of one that I have done as part of a research document that I have. I've been working on creating research documents that really have all of the information that I have on a particular individual or on a family line. Now, do you wanna do your footnotes on a timeline at the bottom of the page if it's a really big timeline? Maybe not, because that will take up a chunk of space on your page. Maybe you wanna make those end notes rather than footnotes, which will place those notations at the end of the document. It's really up to you and what works for you. Now, one of the other things that you can do with timelines, and you can do that either in Excel or you can do it in a Word table. And that is, by the way, where I do my timelines in Word, I make them tables. But you can highlight lines. And I think this is really great. I went to a class by Diane Richards where she really illustrated this well. And I think it's a really great um, way for you to identify certain things. So in this timeline, what I did was I used the gray for historical events that pertain to the family and where they lived. This is kind of more of a where they lived timeline. And then I had birthplaces in gold because I wanted them to stand out. 
but the yellow is in Albemarle County, Virginia. And then I switch to blue for Franklin County, Ohio. And the reason that I do that is I wanted to kind of see when the movement happened. And this is really effective. In this case, it's maybe not quite so evident, but it's really effective when you have somebody that's kind of moving all over the place and you're having a hard time keeping track of it. You can also highlight by type of event, like census record is one color, or you can highlight by um, individual that's in that particular you know record in the timeline. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it. This other example is similar. It doesn't highlight the rows, but it highlights the names. So I can kind of see a pattern in names. So we see Mary Ann Millaway is pink, Isaac is red, in this particular spreadsheet, I have a column for the Harris family, which is her husband's family. I have a column for her family. And then I've made a column for others because our fan club is important, right? And then I may have some notes at the end that talk a little bit more of things that I think may be helpful. Now, again, in this instance, I did this as a table in Word and I have footnotes attached to the records or some of the records. So I try to keep my videos rather short and sweet because your time is valuable and there are a myriad of timelines I could show you. I could show you different aspects of different timelines, but really what you need to do is figure out what's going to work for you. What is going to help you identify the information that you need to identify in that particular research problem? What is going to help you see things more clearly? And I promise you that as you use timelines and pay attention to that skill, you're going to be a better researcher and you're going to be able to solve some of those brick walls and overcome some of the problems that you're having in your family history research. So I hope this has been helpful. Look in the description below in the video description for the links to if you wanna get these timelines. Um, please like the video if it's helpful to you. And I made a goal this year to double my subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Thanks, bye.